Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we got a brand new installment of This Week in EDM, where you go for songs that came out this week in EDM. As always, there is a Spotify link down below for all the songs and easy access listening. But other than that, let's hop into it with the bad category. As always, I just remind you that these are just my opinions. Do not take them as gospel truth. So let's hop into the bad category. We've got Alan Walker and Flo Rida with When I Grow Up, Young, Wild, and Free is the subtitle there. And, uh, well, this song certainly exists. Uh, Flo Rida is pretty rough in shape on the kind of lyricism here and the flow. Well, Alan Walker is pumping out more kind of generic commercial bait. I don't think it's mixed great and it's with its short runtime. Uh, this one is a no for me, dog. I've got Timmy Trumpet and She Codes with Chasing Ghosts. Uh, absolute nothing burger of a song with nothing real or interesting to offer. The production is bland, the mixing is linear. Um, yeah, there's really not much anything to it. And hopping into the Mac category, we have Elefante, Yatep, and Day with All We Get from the new Forever Weather EP out now by Elefante. And I'll give these three some credit for not going entirely generic with this Melodub track, but it still very much falls into the tropes of the genre without exploring anything overly new. Then we got Monocule and Nikki Romero with Lost in the Dust, a melodic house that I really just don't care for. The vocals felt underwhelming and lacking much impact, while the kind of backing production is a fairly typical house track. Then we got Alok and Griffin featuring Julia Church with Never Letting Go, a short house tune that really offers nothing new in the grand scheme of the space, as it teeters this line between kind of commercial and slap house. Then we got the Soul remix of Diva, originally by Bishu, and the original of this one is actually one of my favorites from the album, and I do think the drum and bass remix is a good job of keeping the kind of core sound of the original intact while completely switching up its genre. Then we got Soul and Shepard and Richard Walters with Close Your Eyes. I do like the long progressive house movements, but there really isn't a lot going on structurally, a track that I just don't think values the time that it offers a whole ton. Then we got Shingo Nakamura, Mango, and Nina Carr with Solace from the Solace album out now by Shingo Nakamura. And this is a beautiful melodic house track that does end a little abruptly and feels slightly incomplete at times. It just kind of felt like to me there was needed another movement or another production element that this track kind of was just lacking at times. Then we've got Virtual Riot with Scorched Earth. Um, not really feeling this new Virtual Riot. Um, Songwriting-wise, it's a little lackadaisical and directionless, and the production isn't overly explosive or exploratory either. It's got some kind of jungle and garage vibes here and there, but otherwise is a pretty kind of whatever techno-leaning cut to me. Then we're hopping into the good category with Haves Flow VIP, a fairly unnecessary VIP in my books as this new mix doesn't do a whole ton to shake up the formula of the original. In fact, I think a lot of the energy of the original is kind of diminished with this VIP, but in a vacuum, it's still a good song. I just don't really get the uh, need for this song's existence. Then we got Drove with Give It Time from the A Moment in Time EP. And uh, this is a down to earth, more simple tech house tune that's meant to be an easy listening cut. Uh, I'll give it to Drove here for great mixing, but otherwise it's a very plain kind of track. <laughs> Then we got Sultan with Destinations from the new Destinations EP. Uh, this is a very intentionally messy sounding song uh, with like white noise in the background and an ever changing melody in both tone and beat. I actually really appreciated the messiness and I think the kind of hybrid trap finale was golden. Then we got Tourist and Gold Panda with Tomorrow from the Us 2 EP. Uh, this is a nice garage tune with a constant beat and simple song structure. Nothing much to it, it's just kind of solid mixing and great production. We got Edipolo and Cello with True, a light summery house style track with the tropical atmosphere. Great for easy listening sessions. Then we got Mern with Ignis, a long progressive house tune with a melodic twinge to it. I do love the long extended movements with this being a five plus minute track in length, but I do feel like there is more space that could have maybe been explored in some areas. With all his heart. What's his life? 
Then we've got Anti Up featuring Reese from the Sticks, Anti Up being the combined alias of Chris Lake and Chris Lorenzo, uh, with the new track What Is Life from the new album of the same title, What Is Life. This track in particular is a long UK tech house cut. It, just under six minutes in length. That's both kind of the first and the title track of the album. It serves its purpose as a lead track more than a single, I would say, as it often is rhetorically asking, what is life? Uh, it's got a big, firm beat to it, and I do love the kind of extended length of this track in particular. <laughs> And we got Jonth with Bunny Hop. Uh, actually crazy that Monsca released two DNB cuts this week with almost the exact same core melody. This also being alongside the Flow VIP, but otherwise this track is a more intense and brooding cut that's a lot more dense in tone. Then we got Andromedec featuring Sarah DeWarren with Stone, a fairly standard structure and production value within the dance floor drum and bass ecosystem, but I can't deny that it's a pretty good song. Yeah, it's a little typical, but it's still great. Then we had Drinks On Me with Heaven, a simple garage track from Drinks On Me with an eerie ending, uh, but otherwise it's a fairly standard garage cut with a simple beat and vocal sound. Fiesta. Fiesta. Then we had MPH with Fiesta, a bass house cut with a Latin house beat very similar to reggaeton, yet the track sounds more like a garage fusion. It's a unique track for sure that uses elements that are pretty quite familiar, but turning them into a, a sort of track in a way that feels unique. They had Dion Timmer and Chime with Defeatist, a creative track with many unique twists and turns. And while I don't love the kind of weaker lead synth hit, this track has a lot of other things going really right for it with its constantly changing beat and structure. Then we got Rebel Scum and Ghost in Real Life with Prepare for War. I don't love the kind of younger, childlike vocals as it doesn't really match the tone of what they're saying, but this is yet again another destructive drum and bass tune from Rebel Scum with rocking guitars and a main distorted synth lead. Then we got Bison with Abduction, a moving complex tune that has elements of bass house scattered all throughout with these kind of big synth sustains on the drops. Uh, probably my favorite Vizen song I've heard yet. Uh, this is peak Chompo in terms of falling in line with the established ecosystem of the Electro House sound design, but still being fairly original. Then we got Bobby, Igloo Ghost, and Folo with Static from the new Daredevil 2000 album out now by Bobby. And this is another kind of destructed club underground UK bass track with a lot going on all at once, both vocally and within the sound design. And there are only two minutes of song here, but uh, there manages to be a lot happening in those two minutes. Then we got Direct and Cloud Nun with Too Soon, another shorter garage cut from these two with a midnight kind of atmosphere to it and darker tone that is a, does a good job of kind of juxtaposing that kind of bright synth that plays on the main melody. We got Hex Cougar and Very with Ultra, the first release on a new kind of creative space label for artists called Break Room that allows artists to hypothetically experiment a lot more with the trap sound. And uh, yeah, this is another Hex Cougar banger with an intense pitched up LED and crushing percussion. Then we got Abandoned featuring Anita Tatlow with Cold Heart, a melodic dubstep with some real kick and passion to it. Uh, this feels like a far cry from the generic mellow dub in execution, yet is still very much on that kind of same wavelength in terms of its structure. It's pretty great uh, and reminds me a lot of the intensity of an AU5. We got Charlie XCX featuring Ariana Grande with Sympathy is a Knife uh, from the new Brat, and it's completely different, but it's also Brat kind of remix compilation. Uh, this is another remix with a big feature that actually changes up the track more so than just adding a feature for a verse, uh, but yet doesn't sound as strong as the original. Uh, Ariana Grande is great here, and I would say not super prevalent on the track, but uh, this is one of the ones that I feel like eh, maybe lacked that star power that I would have wished Ariana Grande would have brought. Then we got Turquoise Death with Mirage from the new Kaleidoscope LP. This is another atmospheric drum and bass tune with lots of garage style percussions to it that uh, makes for a raw and niche lis listening experience. Uh, this track in particular is a lot more constant in its pacing, taking essentially no breaks in its groove or rhythm. <laughs> Then we got ISOXO with I Promise. It is a dense trap song with a kind of constant wall of sound and subtle funk melody as well. It's a unique track for sure, but one that's a little bit more on the reserved side of things for ISOXO. You know 
Muzz featuring Cami Robinson with Nothing Else Matters. I've been critical of Muzz as of late with a lack of real creative new projects. And uh, well, I guess he wanted to clap back. Uh, this feels like Muzz is really finding his groove again for sure. This isn't so much as of a grand song as like Starglide was, but it has a lot more commercial elements to it that is still quite fantastic and is an absolute earworm for sure. We met Halion and Kill the Noise with Water from the new Water EP out now by Halion. This is a big halftime melodic dubstep cut with big sweeping movements and commanding lyricism from Halion. Only to come back with a very Kill the Noise-esque final movement with huge super sauce. I got Rufus the Soul with Levitating from the new Inhale Exhale LP, and uh, this is one of the best tracks on the album, I must say, as the kind of chanting choir of voices and simple percussion is an aesthetic that fits perfectly into this kind of new Rufus the Soul light sound design uh, for this new record that they've been tackling. <laughs> Then we got AT Aliens featuring Northside Hollow with Finding Silence from the new Leaving the World Behind album. A pretty great dubstep tune with a heavily distorted backing synth that gives the track a sense of weight while the vocals from Northside Hollow feed further into that kind of weightiness with even more compression. Then we got Code Pandorum and Dealer of Happiness featuring Flo Anastasia with Tulpa, a uh, cinematic dubstep track that sounds like it's kind of picked straight out of a movie soundtrack. Uh, Flo Anastasia does a great job of in providing a beautiful performance of vocally, and um, the one big drop is also a style that I really, really resonate with. And finally, in the standout category, we've got Glacier with I Hope You Follow Me from the new Here Not Really There LP. It's hard to bet against Glacier as he continually delivers time and time again. This is another kind of jazz fusion, Indytronica, lo-fi, acoustic amalgamation that is EDM, but also isn't really EDM, uh, done in a way that only Glacier really knows how and best. But this has been This Week in EDM. Let me know what you thought of any and all songs in the comment section below. Uh, let me know what you think of this new setup as well. Uh, but other than that, uh, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.